The 22nd topic is to find average rate of change of f of x over a specified interval. This, this is also again a simple problem where you must just remember one formula. And once you remember the formula, you can easily solve it up. Now, the intervals are given as x1, x2. Then, the function f of x over here is given. Now, the formula is simple like this. f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. It's average. Now, average is always, you know, getting the middle value. But this is average of a function based on the interval. So, this is the formula. Or you might have seen, it's a slope formula, you know, similar to the slope. It's absolutely the slope formula, sorry. It's y2 minus y1, sorry, divided by x2 minus x1. You might have remembered this. y means the function at the particular value of x. Okay, that's it. So now, what this means is, the interval, second interval, must be put instead of x. See over here, I'll just put it down over here. So instead of x, you need to put 4. It'll be 4 squared minus 10 into 4 plus 5. This is the f of x2 minus, what is f of x1? Just put this value over here. It'll be minus open the bracket minus 4 the whole square minus 10 into minus 4 plus 5 this is the second uh, function f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 before minus of minus 4 put this in the calculator you will get the answer so all of this in the calculator directly will be open the brackets appropriately 4 square sorry 4 square minus 10 times 4 is 40, but I'll just write it as it is, plus 5. Close the bracket, minus, again open the bracket, but now there are two brackets open, so again one more bracket for minus 4, close the bracket, square, minus 10 times minus 4, so open the bracket again, and then lastly plus 5, close the bracket, divided by 4 minus of minus 4, and you will get the answer minus 10. So this is it. Your answer is minus 10. You can do it a little bit differently. Same formula, you can see f of x2, that is 4 minus f of x1, that is minus 4, divided by 4 minus of minus 4. But they have solved f of x not directly, individually. f of 4 is so on, they have found it. And f of minus 4 is so much. They have found it and then they have finally put it in the formula over here and solved it. It will be the same. So it's very easy. The average rate of change over this particular interval over here is minus uh, 10. Now, similarly, you can solve the other problems. There's no change in all these problems. It's just the same thing. Uh, you can see the same formula used everywhere. Everywhere it's the same thing. Now, I will tell you another way to check the answer. Always, you see the average formula when the intervals are like this, from minus 4 to 4 or minus 3 to 3. Since it's a quadratic function, will be the middle term, that is the b value. Now, what is the b value over here? It's minus 10. So, that's the answer. Over here, it's 4. That's the answer. 1, 8. There's nothing over here. There's no x value. That means 0 or minus 3. Now, I won't go in detail, but see the graph generally. Imagine they're asking same intervals, minus 3. My, it'll be the same on both the sides. Uh, this is not so important. The graph is not important because this is quadratic. I just drew a parabola. All are quadratic functions. So in such cases, when the intervals are same over here, you can remember the B value will be the average rate of change. But still, do the formula, solve it using the formula over here. That is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. And then solve it by yourself because you need to write the steps. The formula must be written, the substitution must be written. And then the answer. But then double check the answer with the b values of the quadratic functions.